Valdovelli simulation acidizing. I am Payman Danishva from Iran, and I'm a simulation engineer at Dana Energy Company. Let's just start our webinar without outlines, but uh, we should wait about to upload my file to this Zoom platform. After that, I will start. And I think that maybe our webinar, uh, it takes about uh, 90 minutes and you can write your questions uh, in a comment. And after 45 minutes, um, a small break time and I will see the question. If any question I can answer, I will answer to you. And again, continue our webinar. So let's start our webinar with outlines about the well simulation, formation damage, skin factor, acidizing type, fracture, matrix, effect on formation damage and additive, lab procedure, matrix operation, job procedure, and deep clear simulation procedure. First of all, who wants to know about the well simulation? Well simulation is a well intervention performed on oil and a gas to well increase production by improving the flow hydrocarbon from drainage area into the well bar. And let us start it with mother formula that everybody studied. Petroleum engineering knows about this formula. With this formula, we have the production, we have the permeability, thickness, and skin factor, and the available radius, and the viscosity, and the pressure, and anything. But in the simulations, if we increase the permeability of ore, thickness, ore, decrease in viscosity or skin factor, we can uh, see the better uh, production rate, okay? In a simulation, we have some techniques. We have some techniques here, mechanical, chemical, biological, combined mechanical, and a chemical and a thermal methods. But here, just we on wants to talk about the matrix acidizing, it's about the mechanical and the maybe combined mechanical chemical method about the fracture. Uh, as you can see here, the acidizing effect on the skin factor and reduce the skin factor. And whenever we our skin factor decrease, our production rate, if other parameter uh, help us can uh, increase the production or follow. Every time when we want to use a simulation techniques, we should know about some parameter, about the formation and mineral composition, about the amount of the damage, type of the damage, about the contact time available for chemical treatment, about our equipment, about the pressure, about the mud filtrate, about the compatibility, maybe some additive uh, not compatible with uh, formation or other parameters that in a well. And a formation purposes like a properties, a porosity, permeability, and solubility. What is a formation damage? Guys, formation damage in a normal, in a friendly, it's that one body got sick. Okay, got illness. We need a doctor. Doctor should cure him with some medicine. Okay, whenever our well got sick, we shoot a simulation jobs and our simulation jobs with uh, some medicine, okay? We should know about this medicine. Uh, 
Now, what is the formation damage in a book? Yeah, it's a condition most commonly caused by well work fluid, usually during the completion of work over operations, and it impairs the permeability of reservoir rocks, therefore reducing the natural productivity of reservoirs. You know, formation damage always affects on a well, and you can uh, sense it whenever your production rate decrease or uh, uh, your oil production decrease and the water production increase. Some of them, uh, uh, some type of the formation damage that may be occur in a well. As you can see in a picture, you, you see that these are the formation damage radius. It can be deeper and deeper, not only the near the well bore, maybe more than and more than uh, some foods. We have some type of the formation damages and some medicine for them that I like as the emulsion which vitability change water black scales, organic mix and silt and clays. Yeah, so for the water blacks, for example, water blacks, if we have a gas well or if we have a oil well. If you have a gas well for water black problem, we can use the acid with alcohols or gas like as a methanol or is a propanol. And in an oil well, we can use acid solvent or acid surfactant or non-acidic, your acidic say. What is an skin factor? A skin factor is a parameter that you can quantify the formation damage. You know, you told me uh, that, you know, uh, engineer told me, we have, a form we have a problem. We have one type of the formation damage. Okay, this formation damage, how we can use it in our formula to increase the production. So one parameter need to explain about the formation damage. That parameter is the skin factor. A skin factor can be, be a negative or can be a positive. If negative is okay and the well is in improvement in flow, but if it's a positive, which means that the formation damages exceed and we should do simulation jobs here. And you know, uh, some uh, note that uh, in below the slide that you can see that positive skin can lead to severe well production, which is reduce, reducing the well economic revenue. No, yes, it's okay because uh, whenever you uh, enclose with uh, the formation damage, if you don't cure this one, you will be dead, not dead as you think. It means that the production rate will decrease, decrease and decrease, and the economical uh, about the work is not good for us. And we should do it to increase the productions to uh, get back the well again. The skin factor, as you remember, uh, remember in some slide before, you see that the skin factor, if the skin factor here in the formula, if the skin factor is zero, it means that the well is good. Nothing is here. You can uh, shoot away, everything's okay. But whenever you skin factor, it seems that a positive, we should know about the simulation techniques and which techniques are appropriate to cure the formation damages. And whenever you have a negative, yeah, yeah, the engineer will be happy because his job and his uh, acidizing job design or simulation job design has the result, has the best result and we get the negative skin. So, uh, to get the negative skin. The skin factor uh, can, 
show, you can see that the skin factor is the total skin factor about the formation damage. Some skin factor mechanical, some is for stimulation, some is for effect of slant or anything that is the skin factor again. Skin factor. As you can see here, the skin factor in a formula is the Hawkins formula. We have a permeability for damage zone and a permeability of the well bore. And another, the radius of the radius of well bore and the radius of the formation damages is, exist. Okay. So when we decrease the when we decrease the radius of the damage zones or uh, pure radius of the damage zone. We can uh, uh, cure the well. We can uh, we can eliminate the formation damage and lead to a skin factor decrease. And decreasing a skin factor, it means that and lead to the production rate will increase. As you can see here, you can see the name uh, uh, graphs and the skin zone, unaffected zone. And you can see that how much it can be affect, how much it can affect on our, uh, from, uh, our production race. What is, uh, and let us start our main particle or main part of our webinar. What is an acidizing? Acidizing is a technique that used in an oil and a gas jobs that designed to lengthen the useful life on oil and gas well. It means that we inject the acid into a well and acid with the reaction that we by formations, with formations uh, and clean up the well and solve some uh, particle uh, that uh, damage the pores root, it can help us to um, increase the permeability, increase maybe the effective porosity, and it leads to, when we do acidizing jobs, it leads to, we can decrease the skin factor. Okay, the skin factor you can skin whenever a skin factor decrease again I tell the production rate will increase. You can see here one of these for carbonate. This is the for sandstone formations. What is an acid? These are the chemical uh, part of our webinar. The acid is the compound when dissolved in a water, it releases hydrogen ions. You can see that we have some type of acid mineral and organic mineral as type of the, uh, uh, as you can see, HCl or HF. An organic acid is acetic acid and a formic acid. You can see. And um, we have some slides with the title with stars. It is, uh, this is only for your uh, information. Uh, I don't want to emphasize on that slide, but this, uh, these are important to know. This is good for your procedure. Now I want to show you that was it the buzzer or cells. The buzzer is compound that when the salt in the water produce a hydroxylion. And what is the salt? This is the, uh, compound formed by the reaction and acid and a process. So uh, why we should know about these reactions, these acids, salts, and salts? Okay, let's go to show you about. We have the two mineral, I introduce you two mineral acid, HCl and an HF acid. And HCl acid reaction, we should know about the reaction uh, 
interaction uh, HCl acid with the calcium carbonate or formation carbonate formation as like a calcium carbonate dolomite and a sandosilis. We should know about them because if we know about the stoichiometry, stoichiometry number in a formula, we can use it in our we, whenever we want to uh, calculate the rate of the uh, rate of the penetration or anything. Always, guys, always, please consider all parameters, additive, reactions, formation properties, and anything. Because when you want to be an engineer, a simulation engineer, you should know all of them. Okay. This is the HCl reaction. And another one is the for HF reaction. You can see that the HF reaction with the calcium carbonate and its product and the, with the sand uh, and this, uh, the sand. And a bit of bentonite connect. And another one, the reaction of the acetic acid with the calcium carbonate, you can see, and the reaction of the formic acid as with the calcium carbonate. We have uh, two normally type of the formation. One is the for uh, the one is uh, carbonate formation. One is the sandstone formation. In a usually and in a normally, we use a HCl acid in a carbonate formations, and in usual, we use a mixture of the HF and the HCl acid in sandstone formations. This is the important things that every time you should know. And in your design, you should consider this is the uh, first step of the design. As you can see here, this is a table that is show you the acid concentrations and the, about the reactions. If the acid concentration hydrochloric concentration is the 50%, it calcium carbonate dissolved pound per gallon is 1.84. As you can see, and uh, compare with other par acid, acetic and formic acid, you can see that this is a more, and you can sink with yourself. You can see here. So the ACN acid is better or the best acid that we can use in carbonate formation as like a bit and limestone or dolomite. Dolomite and the limestone are similar, but the general react with the hydraulic slowly, slower down the form, slower than the limestone. We have three type of the to acid treatment. One of them is soaking agitation. Soaking agitation, uh, only the name is different. Soaking agitation is the acid wash, okay? Another one is the fracture acidizing. And the main subject that I want to tell is the matrix acidizing. Fracture, you inject it, your inject rate, is above, above the fracture pressure. But in a matrix acidizing, the ejection rate must be in a, in a below the fracture pressure. You can see the picture. Uh, my head on the picture. Okay, check that. You know, the injection rate, this is the pressure, the fracture pressure. And if you can see that, Whenever our injection rate upon the fracture pressure, you do a fracture acidizing. When your injection rate below the fracture pressure, you do a matrix acidizing. So you can see that the warm holes and anything that in will be created by acidizing reactions. So acid wash, I told the soaking agent is acid wash. Only the name is beautiful, but the acid wash is okay. And normally and generally we can use it. I think we have uh, some type of the acid wash uh, and the acid wash value uh, is a small. 
and um, you can do that. You can see here. You can spot it across the performation, uh, uh, perform, uh, perforations to allow a short soaking period. Yeah, you can wait it. Or uh, you can, you know, you can do an acid wash job as like as a matrix acidizing jobs below the fracture pressure. It's okay. Yes, it's okay. And another thing that thinks that you can inject the acid into a well bore or into a well and wait it for a few minutes. Of course, you should use some additive to control all parameter that you, if you want to put it in for a few minutes. And another thing, you can put it and uh, immediately follow it back or clean up. It, it depends on your formation damages near the well bore. Fracture acidizing. The fracture acidizing, I told before. We inject the acid with a special chemicals at a rate faster than the formation can accept it by the way the by the flow channels, but the by the natural flow channels. You know, it means that the rate can accept, it depends on the pressure, fracture pressure. Okay, whenever we exceed the fracture, uh, fracture pressure, we do a fracture acidizing jobs by acid, by additive. If uh, you uh, inject the acid, if you see that your pressure build up, and finally, again, don't, it show that, that you do a fracture acidizing you do a fracture. It's not always some parameter. It, it uh, depends on the, your real time data that you can see. It, it is not always that you can see that you do a fracture acidizing. Yeah. Uh, every time fracture acidizing uh, and the hydraulic fracturing Really mistake together. Guys, fracture acidizing, as it names, you can see. By acid, you can do that the fracture acidizes. But in hydraulic fracturing, you do with a special fluid with some propant to do a hydraulic fracturing. As you can see here, here you can see fracture acidizing differ from the hydraulic fracturing. In that, in hydraulic fracturing, hydraulic fracturing fluid usually are not chemically reactive. And a propon is placed on the fracture to keep the fracture open and provide conductivity. Or you can see that effective permeability will be increased. Absolutely. Three factors that influences the type of amount of etching fracture pressure, fracture acidizes, right properties. Yeah, this is important because you should know about the right properties. If you know about the uh, about the formations, about the rocks, or about the elements that in a formations, you can uh, design the best jobs, right properties, type of the acid. Yeah. We can use a high CL acid, it's okay. But we can use some acid, um, maybe acetic acid to retard it, the acid or anything. And another one is the contact time. Contact time. The contact time, the pump rate and the total volume of acid pump determine the contact time of live acid with the fracture faces. Contact time has a direct bearing on the amount of etching obtained. obtained. Yeah. Some parameter that affect on the param and on the fracture geometry. You can see here in a left one. This is a natural fracture in limestone, guys. Fracture uh, usually and normally are exist in a carbonate formations, not in a sandstones. Okay, in a sandstone you do a hydraulic fracturing. You do a hydraulic fracturing. 
But in a cell, but in a carbonate formation, you do a fracture acidosis. Okay, remind it to to your mind. Cool. So some parameter that affect on fracture geometry: injection rate, fluid viscosity, volume injected, fluid loss, rock properties, formation fluid, formation stresses, and reaction rates. Yeah, all of them that you see, I can see that all parameter is important for us for the designing. Uh, you know, guys, this is only the webinar for acidizing. This is not a special about the fracture acidizing because each parameter, if you want to design a fracture or matrix or any, any acidizing, each parameter has a sub session about to talk about all of them. Hydraulic fracturing, I told that some slides we titled with the stars. It's uh, only for uh, your information. And I, I told before about some parameter about the hydraulic fracturing. Hydraulic fracturing is a job that creating a fracture by the injection of fluid into a formation at a pressure higher than the parting pressure of the formations. And normally propons are injected with the fluid to probe the fracture, open the sandstone formation. I told before, the sandstone formations. And the hydraulic fracturing has been used to accomplish four basic jobs. Overcome well bore damages, create deep penetrating fracture, fracture into reservoir, and aid in secondary recovery operation and assist in the injection. You can see here the difference between the acid fracturing and prop fracturing. Acid fracturing is for carbonic acid for etching excessively, and you can see the corrosion. To one of the main that you want to remember, guys, acid is the fracture acidizing at its name shown, and the uh, special fluid, not acid, is a uh, hydraulic fracture or for prop fracturing. As you can see here, we, uh, I want to show you some uh, picture from the formation or small cutting. You can see here that uh, the blue one, the light blue one is the natural fracture. And the yellow one, the, this is uh, for the hydraulic fracture and the red one, if you saw the faces, if you see the faces, you can see that this is the for acid fracture. This is for the acid fracture. And this is the note that every time remember, low permeability sandstone reservoir is good for hydraulic fracturing. High permeability carbonate formation is for matrix acidizing and low permeability carbonate is for fracture acidizing. What is in the most matrix stimulations? You know? I told before that is about the stimulation. But in a matrix stimulation, treatment increase well productivity by pumping a special formulated treatment fluid, maybe acid. Acid is one of the fluid that we can inject. So maybe we have some damages and each damage is a needed medicine. One medicine is acid. Another medicine maybe is a corrosion inhibitor or a scale inhibitor. You can see here in the picture, here we have some plugs and a scale inhibitor escape. So whenever we inject the acid into a formation, we should clean up. But the scale inhibitor, you know, uh, maybe we cannot remove this escape. We inject a scale inhibitor only to control the escape, okay? And what is the matrix acidizing? Uh, matrix acidizing is accomplished by injecting chemicals to dissolve or dispersed matter near the well bore that impair well production in sandstone, impair well production in sandstone, or to create new or unimpaired flow channels between the well bore and the carbonate formations. Guys, one thing I want to tell. I think that maybe I forgot to, to uh, tell you in a, some few slides. 
Now, in a sandstone formations, I said that whenever we acidize the uh, sandstone formations, only we can decrease the scheme factor to zero, nothing more, only zero. But in the carbonate formations, we decrease the scheme factor to minus maybe minus five or minus six. This is a maybe minus five or minus six. I, I will show you a table about this position. So whenever we talk about the scheme factor in a Sanderson formation, the lower scheme factor is zero and a carbonate is of minus five or minus maybe six. This is a matrix acidizes. You know, matrix acidizing, when our formations permeability is so low, we do a fracture acidizes. If uh, our permeability is okay, maybe 10 millidarcy for the oil well or one millidarcy for gas well, it's okay for the matrix acidizing. Okay, remember that these two type for type of the formation again, sandstone, carbonate. In a picture, you can see that carbonate, whenever we inject the acid in a carbonate formation, as like as a branch or wormholes open. But in, in a sandstone formations, only the acid solve the some element between the sand element, okay? It matrix acidizing uh, in a carbonate always after acidizing our permeability, our effective permeability will be increased. Why? Because when we do acidizing in, as in a carbonate formations, we make some fr small fractures or features or anything, okay? These small features or fractures help to natural permeability of the reservoir. So the matrix acidizing in a carbonate formation, absolutely, absolutely, if the matrix acidizing job is well, absolutely will increase the permeability, will increase the effective permeability of the formations. So this, uh, and again, one thing, when you inject acid in a formation, in a carbonate formation, I told before, you can see the negative scheme values. Yeah. But in a Sanderson formation, you can see, you can see in a decrease in a scheme factor. But in zero skin factor is limit. But in a formation, but in a carbonate formation, you can see that minus five, your will be in improvement. Yes, in a sandstone, when you inject the acid, you inject the acid, your well will be will be back to its past when it everything is good, when the well start. Okay. But in a carbonate formation, you do something extra uh, work to open some channels, some wormholes, and some fractures or some features to increase the permeability, increase the productions, and decrease in the scheme factor. As you can see here, about I talk about if you remember the picture, the last slide I will show you again here. And here, acid can create a line dominant of wormholes in carbonate, and it cannot create the wormholes in sandstones. I explained it before. Matrix acidizing type. We have four types of the matrix acidizing type, okay? And it depends on the volume and it depends on the radius of penetration that we want to inject with acid. 
WC or wellbore clean out. It's about the 10 to 25 GPF or gallon per foot. NWS or near wellbore simulations. And the intermediate matrix simulation and the extended mat ma matrix is acidizing. As you can see here, in a carbonate, especially in a carbonate formations. As you can see here, the WCO is not affected on a skin factor so much, but then NWS, you can see the skin factor decrease till to minus two. And the IMS, you can decrease to minus three. But the more important, the more important uh, type of the matrix acidizing top is the extended matrix acidizing. Extended matrix acidizing or means EMA treatment. It's about the six foot or more than six foot radius of penetrations. And the range of the value for each foot is the 150 to 500 gallons. And effect on the skin factor is range from minus three to minus five. EMA treatment can result in production improvement comparable to hydraulic fracturing. Yes, hydraulic fracturing open all um, uh, open all fracture with sound and help us to uh, increase the effective permeability and this lead to uh, this lead to increase our production rates. As you can see here, it's a table that you can see. It's a natural compilation. It's a skin factor maybe one to twenty five, but with some uh, type of the matrix acidizing, you can decrease it the skin factor to minus five, minus four, minus three, and remember if. And this is the uh, graph that you can see that the productivity, if the skin factor decrease, our productivity will increase. The matrix acidizing about the Sanderson, I explained it before. Whenever I want to, whenever I talked about the matrix acidizing um, in a carbonate formation, just only to uh, tell you some target about this parameter. I told before that for the matrix acidizing in Sanderson, we use the HCl and a HF acid. Okay, these are uh, these are uh, maybe known, uh, maybe uh, your uh, ears heard that about the mud acid. Yes, a mixture of the HCl and HF, HF acid. Uh, known as a mud acid, yeah, and it's it is important. It is important to optimize and find the best mixture of the HCl and HF acid for injecting in the sandstone formations. We can use it of core flow study, and one parameter that always I told to my guys: this is important. The temperature effect. As you can see here, we have some percent, 6 percent HCl and 0 0.5 HF and anything that you can see that um, for uh, the book uh, uh, definition about the Sanderson acidizing, Sanderson matrix acidizing is a process is aimed at increasing the formation permeability in the vicinity of the wellbore by dissolving some formation materials some formation materials in a parenthesis, formation materials between the sand elements, okay? Another part, mixture of the HF and HCl acid. These are, you can see that the temperature effect on the reaction rate of hydrofluoric acid with sand. You see that when our, uh, temperature goes up. We use a low percent of the HCl acid because HCl acid reaction, if you remember before, 
The ACL reaction with the formation whenever our temperature goes up will be so fast. We should decrease in percent of the HCl acid. Okay, so one parameter that we want to optimize the mixture of the HF and the HCl acid is for temperature. Uh, remove some materials. Remember again, remove some materials in parentheses between the some sand elements. Okay, these materials, which type of materials? I mean, yes, clays, silica coating, or anything that be between the uh, between the sands. You can see that removal of the clays and can lead a large increase in the improvement or removing the silica coating, allowing the dissolution of the carbonate deposit increases the formation solubility. Absolutely. In a sandstone formations, we have the carbonate. Carbonate here only is the cementing particle that uh, join the sand together. And we can use it, and we can use it, HCl acid, to remove and solve this one, OK? And to overall effect of this token action is significant increase in, in reservoir productivity. But you know, guys, uh, we talk about the uh, good part of the acidizings. But one thing is important. If you choose a bad, bad mixture of ACL and HF acid, and if you solve more uh, clays, uh, more clays or silica coating or anything or cementing, this help, uh, this may be lead to the sand productions. The sand production is the worst things, is the, the, is, it's the worst formation damages that you can enclose with. Okay, be careful about your designing, guys. These are only for your information. These are maybe, uh, uh, maybe have some mistake. But if you want to be a simulation engineer and design a matrix or acid, um, design an acidizing job, you should consider all parameter. Guys, again, I tell, consider all parameter. Okay, and uh, here I want to show you some uh, type of a clay, elite, chloride, kaolinite, or as 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 it, or motmoyonite. Uh, elite is a migrating clay and can be created with HF and chloride. You can see that it's a high amount of the iron and create maybe iron sequestering agent, kaolinite. It's affected by acid and the motmoyonite. It's uh, Heart, this is a harmful um, clay that whenever uh, water, uh, it's a water sensitive, you know, whenever um, water attacked to him, he accepted, um, he explode, <laughs> you know, uh, he will be big, bigger, it will be bigger. You can see here uh, the Created volume, gallons per food score, and the flow improvement ratio, ratio with the mixture of the HCl acid and the HF acid, and the gallon per food is about the, which of them is okay for the acidizing. Um, matrix acidizing carbonate. You know, uh, sandy stone formation, uh, I think. Uh, and in a in a article or in a book, every time we read about uh, we read before the carbonate formations, the carbonate formation uh, always uh, more than the sandstone formations. Maybe especially in Middle East, I think that I can um, sense it and I can read about it. Maybe another. Uh, 
in some uh, world of in world may be different. Much of the world oil and gas comes from limestone and dolomite, and either in their relatively pure form or in the form of the carbonate or silica sand cemented together with calcium matrix. Carbonate matrix acidizing is a well assimilation technique where acid injected, injected again, at less than the formation fracture pressure. Because if we exceeded the fracture pressure, we do a fracture. Okay, do a fracture, no, uh, uh, always not good. Because if you want to do a fracture acidizing, you should consider all parameter. If you want to do a matrix acidizing and you exceed the fracture pressure, you maybe make a fracture uh, in uh, some uh, where in a well that we don't want to fracture that or acidize there, okay? And so it lead to be a bad acidizing and maybe the well be damage will be dead, will be shot, okay? In carbonate reservoirs, hydraulic acid is the most commonly applied assimilation fluid. Yes, I talked before. And you can see that the organic uh, acid formic and acidic we use, yes. And we have used some percent, yes, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, and only depend on the formations. And if you remember matrix form type of matrix acidizing is the 10 to 200 GPF, yes. This is the range of the acid that we can use for the carbonate formations. And for the effective acidizing, matrix acid and carbonate, we use the emulsified acid system or gel acid system. Emulsified acid system, emulsified with hydrocarbon. Two, guys, you know why? Because acid reaction, I told before, HCl reaction with the formation is so fast. We emulsify the acid to react slowly and we have the live acid more to go deeper and has a reaction with the, um, has a reaction with the uh, more interval, you know, because we, uh, we need to, we need to a simulation or acidizing all lengthen of the formations. But you can see that to provide retardation, yes, retard the reactions to achieve deep penetration. Yes, we want to inject the acid deeper into formation and compatible at a high temperature. Yes, again, in a high temperature, the HCl acid reaction will increase. So because of this one, we should control the reaction and we use these two type of the acid system, emulsified acid at the gel acid system. You know, uh, here, the matrix acidizing or horizontal well. You know, guys, horizontal well and a vertical well, uh, all parameter that you consider in a vertical well, you should consider in the horizontal well. But in horizontal well, you should consider more parameter. Okay, you should consider more parameter. And you know, I think that all uh, guys know about the difference between the vertical and the horizontal well. Horizontal well are normally targeted for the same formation with a good vertical permeability and the reservoir that suffer from the coning problem. Coning problem is a production problem in which gas cap gas or bottom water infiltrate the perforation zone in the near the well bore area and reduces the productions. As told before that, the acid and horizontal, all aspects of the job design that apply to vertical waste should be considered. In most cases, you know why? Because 
again about the HCl reaction. If um, you accurate about my talking till now, I talk about the reaction more than all parameter. You see, you should know about all parameter, the reaction and the reaction and the reaction. Why? Because we want to control the HCl reaction or HF reactions. HF reactions because of as it has a tendency to enter the formations in a zone close to a vertical section, obtaining only partial simulations because of, okay, remember here, two, two acid systems we use to emulsify the acid or gel acid system. These two type, or we can use a diversion techniques to overcome this problem, okay? We go to about the uh, diversion techniques, but here, remember, I remind in your mind, every time bowl heading acid into a vert or into a horizontal well has generally proven on me unsuccessful. This is on the article study. Uh, I told, uh, I want to tell you guys, Please uh, study more article about the acidizing, about the formations, about the somewhere in a world. Because uh, if you have studied more article, you can obtain more information and you can be a good simulation engineer for yourself only, maybe. If you believe yourself, you can do anything that you want. This is the article a study. The article study told us if the well has this 100% interval, if the acid dies, 25% of this, 25% uh, of this interval properly, we can uh, get a best result. If the acid dies, one, uh, total interval in a bad way. Okay. And this is, uh, you can see that acid in 25% of the horizontal lens properly will provide approximately 75% of the productive the potential if all of the lens has been acidized properly. This important result became a 75 and 25 rule. Okay, let's go to diversion techniques. Guys, uh, I want to now take a break uh, for see maybe if you have any question, you can write in the comment, in a comment zone. If I know the answer, I will answer to you, okay? After, after that, we will, we will start it again. Thanks for the session. It's really so much as one of them. Many of our methods describe the implied lesson. Uh, guys, is really simulation is one of the many UR methods? Yes, you can categorize this to, to UR methods. You know, uh, only uh, you category on and uh, not EOR, you know, only simulation, you know, because EOR is okay uh, for the secondary production or third production. It's correct implied that acidized into retina are used mainly to reduce the skin factor, especially its carbonate. No, guys, you know. A skin factor, only the parameter that quantify the formation damages. You acidize to cure the formation damages. And your formation damages, if the formation damages removed or control, 
these formation damages, this category should be quantified by some number. This number is a skin factor. And a skin factor, yes. But uh, we do acid in jobs to increase the permeability, effective permeability, or open some channels or open some form holes. Yes, all of them leads to uh, increased production. And if you remember about the form, mother formula about the inflow productions, you can see that if the production rate uh, increase all parameter, uh, all parameter no changing, no altering, yes, the scheme factor will be decreased or reduces. I think if, uh, I wish that I convinced you about my, with my answer. And I don't know as far as I understood, I said there's many using camera. Guys, yes, uh, another question, it's a good question. We do acidizing, jobs, acidizing jumps in a geothermal jobs in Indonesia. You can uh, study some article about the uh, um, acidizing in a geothermal west. Guys, any question? If no, we want to continue again. Diversion techniques. We have some type of the diversion techniques, mechanical or a chemical diversion techniques. Mechanical uh, is isolation of, uh, with the packers. Chemical diversion is a ball sealer, particulate, diver particulate diversion, foam acid diver and viscous fluid diversion. We can see here to obtain the best result for, uh, from the most acid stimulation jobs, it is important that the acid be distributed over the entire production or injection interval. Yeah, this is the normal that we want to do in a horizontal web. And what is the diversion techniques for the mechanical? Because you want, you know, the zone A, the zone B, and the zone C. We want to acidize. Acidize the zone. You know, we put the some packer between the zones, and we acid there because we, because uh, we we don't want to acidize more interval. Only this part of the well. So we use the packer, or we can use a coil tubing. We send the coil uh, near the formations and set the packer. Uh, below the coil tubing or far the uh, coil tubing. And after that, we inject the acid, only the, we inject the acid. Uh, guys, once uh, somebody raised hand, yes. Uh, but please uh, write your question or anything in as, in a chat box. Thank you. This is a mechanical one. And another one is a ball sealers. Ball sealers are the rub coated balls that are designed to sit in the performations, perforations and reactive. Reactive fluid carry the bones and place on the formation perforations tunnel of high perm zone, like stem and diverted acid to other intervals. You know, all uh, acid always wants to go to, in, uh, to a permeable zone, okay? But in acidizing, we don't want the one a small part of the interval. We want to acidize all part of so when we acidize the first part or the first stage, again, we, uh, we 
send the ball sealers to sit on the perforations, uh, perforations on the high perm zone to divert the, uh, the bad, uh, uh, divert the next, uh, next acid to another perm zone, okay? This will be repeat because we want to do all, we want to do acidizing for all interval. And another thing for the diversion techniques, um, okay, let's show a picture. You can see that the ball sealers comes, uh, comes down and sit on the perfor perforations and the acid goes to another zone. Another uh, technique is the particulate diversion. These are some particles that we send it as, as like as this is um, uh, this is not the same as the ball sealer as a chemically, but it do a job as a ball sealer. It go down, uh, go down and sit on the hyperm zone and again divert the acid to another zone. Okay. Another diversion technique is the foam diversion, foam acid diversion. What is the foam? What is the foam? Foam is that a gas injected to a water or fluid that you can see that it produce a foam, a CO2 or N2 or nitrogen. When using the diversion techniques, the first stage of the acid solution is injected into the formation as in a conventional acidizing job. This is followed by an innocuous solution of the foam producing surfactant, which is displaced on, into the formation with a compressed gas, such as a carbon dioxide or nitrogen. You know, foam acid or foam uh, go inside and again, go to and uh, cover the hyperm zone and lead to uh, then in a, the next stage of the acid goes to another part of the interval. So this will repeat. So all, if you uh, check, all of them help us or help, uh, help us to acid cover all the interval. Uh, some advantages that uh, the advantages of the foam diverting techniques is a uh, foam produces a black within the formation rather than a solid black at the well bore. The compressed gas aids in cleaning silt and, uh, and, and dissolved particles from the formation and in the clean of the fluid. Adaptability to wide range of the temperature. Yes, this is important. Why we uh, this is important. We should use a diverter that will be remain or its performance be okay in a high temperature. The foam acid diversion is, a di is a, one of the diversion techniques that can do its performance in a high temperature. Another one, the, this is the viscose fluid diversion. Viscose fluid diversion every time is an acid mixed with some polymer or gel or surfactant to be a, uh, to be a viscose fluid. As you can see here uh, in a glass, you can see uh, one type of the viscose fluid diversion it is a VCA diversion. The VCA diversion is for the Halliburton company in a, in a past. Uh, and this is the viscosity at its name that viscosity control acid. You can see here that the acid in the stage one uh, and the stage two, stage three, stage four, a stage one main acid go, the stage two VCA or our diversion goes inside and uh, cover the permeable zone and lead the 
uh, and lead an assist and uh, the another stage asks you to go deeper. As you can see here, stage three, and again, stage four. If we want to acidize, we should stay, and we should uh, divide um, our interval to some part, and we divided our volume of acid to some stage to do our best jobs. And another uh, viscose fluid diversion that usually norm and that usually use in a acidizing jobs is the VDA or VES. Another missing the VDA or VES, this is the, maybe for another company, the some company that use. And uh, yeah, in a marketing, we have uh, more type of the uh, viscose fluid, but um, uh, VDA is uh, one of the famous uh, viscosic, uh, viscosic uh, fluid that we use. Uh, some advantages that it has, it is improve the zonal coverage across the long intervals, efficient worm holding behavior in wide range of the condition, better leak of control, high fluid efficiency, and simple mixing for a smaller equipment footprint. Here you can see that here, uh, the live VES or VDA that we want. Guys, uh, one thing is important, uh, you should know that VCA or VDA go inside, yes, but it should be break because we don't want to remain as, a, we, we don't want to uh, put the acid into a well for all uh, always. Yes, we should break the VES and we should break the VDA. And this is the one of the important parameter that the viscous fluid, fluid should be has. This, this one is that, and this is the breaking procedure. Yeah, for the, uh, for the VCA, we can use the fair check in some condition, uh, maybe a pH uh, about uh, four, uh, the fair check chemical uh, do its jobs and break the VCA and the viscose fluid diversion uh, with a muscle chemical break and be uh, as like as a liquid. If you can see that live VES acid, it has a VES, uh, it has a VES. When we spent with the carbonate formation, we can see as like as a tone cold lines. And after that, when we add the mutual solvent to it or inject the mutual solvent, you can see that be a liquid and no residue. Diversion techniques. The scheme factor, again, okay, the Hawking's scheme fact, uh, formula, you can see that the mu viscosity or radius of the viscosity, it means that radius of penetration of viscosity, you can check that with, uh, you can calculate the scheme factor for your uh, viscose fluid with this formula. Okay, I took uh, another, I, I said, uh, slide that I want to talk about the viscosity. I think that all guys, you know about the viscosity. Viscosity defined as a property of a fluid that resists the force tending to cause the fluid to flow. And the acid in a normally without additive, as like uh, the specific gravity is near the, uh, near the water, and, uh, and absolutely, uh, the viscosity is about the one centipose. And it behaves as a Newtonian fluid, okay? The Newtonian fluid performance uh, is a performance, uh, you can uh, sense it, you can, um, you can easily predict it, uh, what is the next 
movement. But whenever we add some uh, material or additive to acid as like as the uh, polymer or gelling agents, our Newtonian fluid will be a non-Newtonian fluid. And it's a complex to predict the behavior, okay? I told, uh, I told about the non-Newtonian and Newtonian fluid because in a pumping of the acid, your rate will be every time change. Maybe in a Newtonian way, it means in a main acid, you can see that your uh, rate of the penetration or rate of the pumping is okay, nothing change. But in a non-Newtonian, in parentheses, viscous fluid, you can see that the rate may be a little down or maybe goes up, but every time detail down because of the friction that it create by the valvor. You can see here about the non-Newtonian, Newtonian that you can predict it with these uh, graphs with the shear stress and shear rate. Uh, and the Newtonian fluid, you can see that as like as a water oils or liquid that do not contain, contain solid particle in suspensions. And another one is a non-Newtonian fluid I talked before about this one. It's that the uh, uh, acid will be mixed for the jelly and uh, gel, uh, gel or polymer that will be a non-Newtonian and you can um, check it or you can understand it when you see a real data, a real time data in acidizing jobs and your difference in uh, uh, penetration, penetrating rate. So here, till here, just we talk about the acidizing and the benefit of the acidizing. But uh, acidizing can lead to some formation damages, as like as the deconsolidation of the rock matrix, generation of migrating, secondary precipitations, water blocks, fluid incompatibility, acid precipitation, and vitability changes. Okay, so. Remember all of them. Remember all of them. Each part of this has a vote. Okay. Remember all of them. Formation damages that we can exist occur. So if again, you know, now we are a doctor, the veil is sick got the illness. So we should uh, prepare medicine for it. We have some additive to add the acid to cure some formation damages may be occur by the acidizing, as like as the corrosion inhibitor surfactant non-emulsifier anti-sludge, iron controller, mutual solvent, friction reducer, clay stabilizers, diverting agents, and the alcohols. Diverting agents as uh, like as the polymer or gelling agent or anything that can divert the acid. So only I want to briefly explain about the additive. As you can see here, the corrosion inhibitor, uh, uh, corrosion inhibitor uh, help us uh, to decrease the corrosion during the acid treatment, as the name shows us. And the surfactant, uh, surfactant non-emulsifier. Non-emulsifier, uh, you know, uh, the acid, um, well, we want our acid uh, our acid performance is uh, 
will be good. But we use a non-emulsifier to uh, prohibit an acid emulsifier. Um, non emulsifier is uh, is a uh, you can uh, category non emulsifier in surfactant, but you remember in yourself, not in a book. Only uh, this is for experience, nothing more. Okay, because it can do as a Surfactant. Surfactant is a more important, is one of the most important additive that we use in acidizing. What is performance? Change the surface and interchantation, disperse our follicular clays and fines, break, change or, uh, change or maintain the vitality of reservoirs, reducing acid, create or break a foams, you know, a mousse, a mousse oil or mutual solvent break the foams, break the viscous flow, break the, break the VDA. Mutual solvent can be a surfactant. And promote or prevent the water blocks. Anti slide agents, that in, you can see that its name, slide is precipitate formed from the reaction of high interest acid with crude oil. And we use anti slide uh, to uh, control the slide and remove the slide. And the clay stabilizer is for the reason for the using clay stab to keep the clay and fines in suspensions and prevent migrating and swelling of the clay. Diverting agent, I explained it before. And the mutual solvent, you can uh, categorize in a surfactant to maintain a water wet formations to water wet insoluble formation fines, to reduce the water saturation near the wellbore, to help reduce the absorption of surfactant. And one of the important, one of the important is the iron controller. The iron controller. Iron, we have some type of the iron controllers and we talked about iron control in next slide. Additive iron controller. When we have the iron in the form of the ferric ions rather than the usual ferrous ions are dissolved by the acid, iron precipitation will be occurred and the permeability reduction can occur after the acidizing. Guys, this is so important in acidizing. If your uh, acid jobs wants to be a good, your acid should not be at an well for long time. It should clean up after the acidizing. Because if the acid remain in a well, corrosion will be occur. Iron um, the precipitation will be occur or secondary precipitation. This is the formation damages. Whenever pre secondary precipitation occur, it close the pores root. Okay, it close the pores root, and every jobs every work that we do to acid jobs to open the channels eliminated you know our job will be uh, bad jobs and we can control it with three methods ph control such as acetic acid or sequestering agents uh, uh, such as a citric acid or edta or nta NTA and another one is the reducing agent. Reducing agent performance is the converting ferric ions to the ferrous ions. Here is a table for uh, iron control additive. You can see here uh, 
one of the best is the ADTA. You can see about the advantages and the disadvantages and the amount of the uh, chemical that you can use it for the controlling iron, iron control. Another additive is the alcohol. Alcohol are used in acidizing fluid to remove the water blocks, enhance the fluid recovery, retard acid reactivity, and decrease the water content. The most common alcohols used in acidizing is the isopropanol and the methanol. And there you can see that the disadvantage of using alcohol effective concentration cause low flash point, increased impressiveness and incompatibility. Alcohol, always we can we use it uh, again. Remember, acidizing job is okay, but in acidizing job, we should consider the cleanup procedure. Alcohol, mutual or surfactant will be help us or will assist us to uh, assist us to clean up the well better. Okay, remember every time I remind your mind. Acid additive consideration. We should uh, know about some consideration for choosing the additive about the compatibility. Maybe corrosion inhibitor that we have is not compatible with the formations, with not compatible with some uh, additive that we have. Another was the solubility and another one the dispersibility. Okay, every time this is uh, depend on the lab engineer that uh, prepare informations and give it uh, and give it to a uh, uh, simulation engineer to design to design his jobs. Guys, now this is a matrix acidizing design data. If we want to design a matrix acidizing, we should know about some parameters, formation properties, about the deviations, about the type of the well, about the case hole or open hole, about the perforation interval, about the length of, about the reservoir properties, as like as the uh, pressure and the fracture gradient. Uh, we have a, some step and I want to tell you about. You know, this is a, a normal well data that you, a simulation engineer need to have to, Design a best uh, uh, to design a best acidizing jobs about the formation right type as like a carbonate or a sandstone reservoir temperature reservoir pressure fracture gradient thickness of a piston thickness of a piston are important parameter guys I told before this is only the uh, this is only the webinar of acidizing each parameter here can has a word for itself. Because if we want to about the, uh, if we want to talk about the rate uh, pumping rate, it has a word for itself. Because the thickness of a piston is it's important. The permeability is important. Porosity and anything that you think, and you need some data about uh, data uh, in luck. You can correlate some luck. You can see the formations. You can see the some fossils. You can uh, uh, you can check all of them to find the best way. Another step is the lab test and procedure. Some of and we have the compatibility test, corrosion test, iron control test, emulsion test, and the diverge, diverter performance. Yes, the, the compatibility test we should do corrosion test, iron control test, emulsion and diverton permanent. Because if we have all parameter from the laboratory and we confident about our additive and about our acid that we use in acidizing, our designing is better, our, our job will be better. And another one, is to calculate the volume of the acid. Okay, first of all, we gather data. After that, we do a test. 
with a sample with uh, with corrosion and anything that with a uh, oil sample or uh, condensed sample from the well. Another one is the calculate the volume of the acid or a divertent. The volume of the acid and the uh, diverter, you should uh, remember, if you remember as a skeuometry number, you can check here one of the table that I can I use it in Excel file for the calculate the volume. You can use that the acid, acid as skeuometry number is important. Gravimetric dissolving power is important. Radius of one more preparation or important and acid drug properties is important too. And another stage is the matrix as step four is the pumping pressure calculation. Pumping pressure calculation. Again, pumping, remember pumping pressure calculation. If we exceeded the fracture pressure, we do a fracture, maybe a bad jobs. If we want to do a matrix acidizing, we don't need we don't need to exceed the fracture pressure. The maximum surface injection pressure it depends on the uh, true vertical depth, fracture grade, and hydrostatic pressure gradient, and uh, the safety margin is the uh, five percent or two hundred to five hundred psi. Another important thing that we use, the friction pressure. The friction pressure will be produced uh, by the contacted with the acid and or uh, other additive with the tubular and with the well available. So in a pumping rate, I require friction reducing agent to use the reduced fresh, uh, friction pressure of aqueous acid solution pumped through the tubular goods by much as the 60%. And another step is the pumping rate calculations. You should know about this, uh, the permeability, depths, for, uh, again, skin factor, viscosity, and things. Okay, now data gather, lab procedure, uh, calculate the volume of acid and diverter, pumping pressure, pumping rate, and another step is gather all data and uh, schedule the acid uh, schedule the acid jobs you know normally we use the pure filler at the first stage and after that the main acid and after that the uh, after that uh, diverting agent uh, diverting acid and it will be repeat till uh, to cover all the formation all the interval of the formations and after that we use over flush what is the pre-flush performance? Use ahead of an acid rating solution to prepare or condition the form formation which is going to be stimulated. Guys, only the pre-flush performance is to ready the, perf uh, ready the formations for the acidizing jobs. It is a normal definition for the pre-flush. Yes, it has a vote for itself. And overflush, overflush, we use in overflow some surfactant and uh, we use it uh, uh, maybe one or two volume of the wellbore that uh, uh, wellbore. And when we inject it into a well to push the acid into a formation. And after that, in a clean up, help us uh, and clean the well better. And, Pure flushes are often used. Uh, this is a definition about the pure flushes. Pure flushes are often used ahead of an acid treatment solution. The pure flush allows the formation to react the acid with the oil pressing interval. And in a Sanderson formation, always we use the pure flush by 15% HCl. And we can use a non acidic and acidic pure flush for the uh, acidizing and some uh, uh, other performance that you can see here. Uh, some, uh, another, uh, another is a aromatic solvent or mochua solvent or hydraulic acid. We have some type of the pure flushes that we can use and depend on the formations and it depends on the 
well work conditions or reservoir conditions. And another one about the definition of the overflush I told before, overflush is the displacement of acid to rating solution with more than the volume of the filler required to clear the tubing and the casing. And it, it is convenient, it is not convenient to flow back the well immediately after acidizing. In such cases, the treating filler should be overflushed with water or burn, reduce the contact of live acid, the tubing and the cases. We go to seven, step seven. Step seven is for the simulate our simulation jobs, our acidizing jobs. We should uh, find the reliable software and our, we put intra data our acidizing jobs into a, a simulation uh, into a simulation software uh, and you can see your result you can see that how uh, you, you know all software are uh, all software are be uh, will be are not um, uh, be reliable more okay but you can uh, only rely for yourself or uh, for maybe your client that you want uh, that ask you to give him a, this uh, simulation okay you can see your uh, pressure pumping you can see the skin effect on the skin factor you can see the invasion of for invasion profile analysis and guys you should consider uh, for designing the matrix, and you should consider about the about your assets because uh, you know you want uh, one uh, one well that uh, one the uh, one category from one well give uh, give it to you and told you guys uh, design the well design acidizing jobs. You prefer acidizing jobs. You need to big volume of acid, okay? But your company has a batch mixer or a small batch mixer. It's not good, okay? Always consider all parameter, all parameter and all parameter. Successful matrix acidizing jobs. You know, guys, matrix acidizing job is done well, okay. But the important things that uh, it must do after the matrix acidizing is the cleanup. If the cleanup is okay and good, your result will be uh, your result will be shown good. Will be shown good. But if the uh, cleanup it's not good. Your all acid jobs, uh, it's unbeneficial. You know, it's not good. So after acid jobs, need a churchman, need a, a need a, a professional churchman, need a, a professional completion engineer to uh, open the well and clean up the well uh, to. Um, Relive the well again after acidizing jobs. Shutting time. Uh, you know, shutting time, uh, what is the shutting time? Shutting time is a length of time a well is closed in after a simulation treatment is complete. Before flow back initiated, the time is determined by the type of acid used and by downhole factors such as formation types, bottom hole temperature, and bottom hole pressure. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, for HCl acid or carbonate formation, shutting time is not has a meaning. Okay, but uh, because of uh, the uh, some uh, limitation, uh, always uh, we use uh, maybe one hour for shutting times. But the shutting time for carbonate formation, it's not has a meaning. Okay. So uh, guys, our acidizing jobs, how we, can, how we can evaluate our acidizing jobs. In a jobs, you should monitor your real-time data, 
okay? Because you can see the pressure, you can see the rate. Uh, in a decrease or increase in the pressure, you can decide for the next stage because maybe uh, you uh, design a matrix acidizing jobs and you have a problem in jobs. You should change your program, you should change your design by you're considering the monitoring, the real time data. And another thing is that it's a collect and analyze spent acid returns, okay? In a cleanup after. And a compare productivity improvement in productivity potential, you know, with the graphs before and after. Uh, sometimes as our acid jobs do not work. When? When we don't choose a best acid or we don't know about our formation or we use some dirty water in our, our, uh, in our pre flush or over flushes or we use a, 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 a low uh, volume of the acid or uh, we can uh, fail uh, or we have some limitation to clean up the well fast or uh, our uh, expired additive or uh, something that you think you can see it here but these parameters and these uh, items are important that I think that I, 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 I must tell you tell you so our um, uh, acidizing webinar about acidizing jumps are finished, but this is only some slide about the deep cleaner simulation vessel that work on uh, that work in the Middle East and in a Persian Gulf. And uh, we do every time uh, we do every time these nine steps: engineering plan, procedure, load acid and additive safety meeting with uh, client or paperwork, rig up HP line or uh, high pressure line and equipment, pressure test, secure area on the well, cleanup operation and well and rig down all. You can see here some photo, here the uh, one page of our plan. You can see here the flow description, volume, rate uh, and the time and the fluid position. Now the fluid varies and uh, varies our fluid now and the job briefing with our client every time we should do. And this can, uh, you can see that in the left side, the photo is for the loading chemical and in another side, the vessel uh, burst into platform and tie up to platform. And the right side of photo is the rig up for the high pressure rig up. And another slide is for the uh, our controlling room that uh, guys controlling the acid jobs are in our control room with our computer, special computers. Uh, and another one, our uh, mixing system. Another one is for the church man, uh, for the cleanup. Another uh, is if you can see that the fire, it's for the cleanup and cleaning, cleaning of the well. And another thing, it is the real uh, one page of the real time data uh, that we observe uh, during the job. Guys, thank you. This is, these are our references. 